came. The end of the world as we know it. But one thing survived. They could not break its following. The game. Okay, Rick, you take out the junior bumper cars. Uh, I'm going to go for the spin fish. I'd be wary of those fish, though, because I have gut each individual pods myself. Really? That must have been a bit messy. Yeah, it left an awful lot of plop, fish plop. How did, you, uh, how, did, how did you fashion the plastic seats moulded inside? Oh, that was incredible cool. because I actually caught fish that had that all resi internally. Really? Yeah, That's very rare. Well, you never know what toxic waste could... Good evening, everybody, Hi, and welcome uh, to Games World. It's Tuesday night, it's console night, and we're back on air, and he has a habit of sneaking up on you, doesn't he? He certainly does, especially when you're talking about fish guts. He loves his fish, fish guts. guts it's just it. like a Scooby-Doo episode when the mummy is uh, creeping up on Scabby-Doo. Oh, with Thelma, she hasn't got her glasses on, she doesn't realise... I don't remember it's... they were talking about fish guts at the time, though. Really? No. Oh, I think they were. Oh, yeah, no, so... It's like a whole well, mind series. you, we never knew what Scooby snacks actually were. Oh, that's true. Mm. Could be some sort of mm. fish-based product. Yeah. We just don't know. Perhaps we'll ask Drew later. He'll Fishy know. Nibbles. Do you know Drew? No, he doesn't know either. Oh, he's got all the tapes as well, you would have thought. OK, going on to the games. Uh, what's our main review tonight, Rick? We've got Jet Rider as our main game today, and Jet Rider itself is a sort of hover jet ski game. We go with land and water in the future. It's absolutely fantastic, and it's on the PlayStation. Land and water. Land and water combination. Both used. No, no air. Perfect plane style. There's no sky, though. Really? No sky. Oh, that could be a bit deadly. But we also have Destruction Derby, too, and that's another great racing game for the PlayStation. That's coming up in a minute. Are we going over to Kate now to take another look at our... We certainly are. Yes. She's running around like Challenge Annika. Really? No. She doesn't look like Anna. Well, she does from behind. She's not quite as pretty. This is Peter Robinson, and he was one of the co-designers on a rather interesting new arcade game. Tell us about your game, Peter. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, an old concept. They brought it today with electric shock type of treatment, and we use uh, we use a high frequency vibration instead of electricity. That's rarely electricity now is uh, suitable for health and safety and what have you. People are going to do this for fun. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's been out in Blackpool. It's been their best machine in Blackpool for 30 years. What it's is great the world fun. coming to? Yeah, but it is fun. I don't know. <laughs> right, well, yeah. can I have a go then? By all means, go ahead. Wire me up. Okay. It is, it is totally safe, by the way. Fantastic. Have you very, seen very any good great. games that you like? I suppose there are a lot of products around. New games? So, uh, Sound and Leisure got some nice jute box. I like it very much. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, the computer channel's very own Anika Rice, I think you'll find. Certainly is. Or is it Pilau Rice? I am not quite sure. Or uh, perhaps Mr. Ben. Or Uncle Ben. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Ben's ben. the guy with the hat. <laughs> and the shopkeeper, as if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared and said, Oh, can you get out of your clothes, please? Very yeah. good, that, wasn't it? Yeah, I've got all of those on tape as well. mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, he'd become a knight and go and fight dragons and stuff like that. Do you remember? Oh, that was great. And he always got a little memento, like a snowstorm. Yeah, he did. In fact, he stole those. Yeah, he Mr. did. Mr. Ben's a thief, children. He was locked away for 25 years. Yeah, that's why we've never seen him again. But uh, he's yeah. going through rehab and he's coming out as <laughs> old man Ben too. <laughs> Uh, during during Gates of War, we found out something very interesting. Jim's yeah. got his own little uh, digitizer thing, and he's gone on to the Scooby Doo website. And you know what we found? What have we found? We Mr. found Barry, we found the recipe for Scooby snacks. My word! 
We're just like ready, steady cook, aren't we? And we'll be giving you the <laughs> recipe later on. Oh, might as well get Angelie Harriet along. And still give you the recipe for scoop snacks. Moving on to the reviews, what we got? We have got Jet Rider, which we mentioned earlier on the PlayStation. Split screen, scrolling, fast driving game sort of thing. Got people with hands like that. Uh, no, it hasn't. Okay. Uh, also, we have reloaded the sequel to last year's favourite from Gremlin. Oh, that's fantastic. It's good shooting enough. and blood. That's what we like. Once more, a bit like the butchers up. down in Kentish Town High Street. Yeah, although perhaps not as much pork in it. Also, also, that's how we're at the Maybe. moment. Uh, last but not least, our other game for today is. Rick. Destruction Derby 2. Thank you. There we are. And that's another sequel to last year's video. And this is much better than the first one. This it's fantastic. It's better. got pit stops and everything. And just watch the reviews. Do you remember that. Penelope pit stops? She was great as well, wasn't she? Do you remember she had all the little men in there? And she, w she wasn't as good as Lady Penelope, though. Oh, I think she was better. Although the, the, the hooded her. claw. The hooded claw. Did you remember I'll get you, Penelope pit, pit stop. It's the last thing I, I ever do. The Deep South, land of the Devil Egg, home of the stretch Cadillac and the string tie, has suffered a rude awakening. Something is afoot in the swamp. Pastel coloured idiots on jet bikes are tearing down stretches of black water, bouncing off logs and disturbing the gentle slumbers of the local alligators. They claim they've been doing it for years, that they've visited exotic beaches and mountain rock pools, but you don't believe them, they're outsiders, and outsiders aren't welcome round here. And you thought the only perils of futuristic motocross were restricted to the race itself. Ten snaking tracks on water and land, jutting rocks, plunging canyons, sudden petrol shortages. Almost everything stands in your way, on the way to the top of the suicidal sports community. These souped-up dream racers blow raspberries in the face of current technology. Your bikes are equipped with fetching miniature jet engines, allowing your rider to reach skin-peeling velocities. If you think you can survive both the rigours of the course and Joe Lean and Bobby's Louisiana Welcoming Committee, then you might just be the man for the job. Jet Rider is fantastic. There, I've said it. Now, Sunny sort of like completely and utterly forgot about this on the release schedule. They just chucked it on the release schedule. They didn't tell anybody it was coming out. So in none of that hype we saw with Wipeout 2097, it was just sort of like slotted in, if you like. Now, that was a big, big mistake because this game really and utterly completely pants all over, if that's the right word. That probably isn't, but there you go. I think you know what I'm talking about pants all over Wipeout 2097 because it is utterly and utterly geared around playability. Now, fortunately, it also has high-res graphics which make it look superb and a split-screen mode. Now, Wipeout didn't have that. A split-screen mode for two players to play all in high-res. It is fantastic. And you have 20 other bikes to race again in single-player mode. Now, you name one other game that does that. Indeed, I mean, it really is a top game. It's nice to see a bit of originality in racing games. So far, 95% of racing games we've had sports cards, sports cards, and sports cards. And with this one, they've actually invented... Oh, what about sports cards? Well, yeah, the occasional sports car, obviously, but it's mostly been sports cards. Okay. But they've actually invented a new vehicle to go with this. It's kind of like a futuristic jet ski, but it can go on land as well. I mean, I didn't prefer it to Wipeout 2097, I must say that, but the, most, the best thing about that game was the weapons for me. But this is nevertheless a great game. All the levels are very, very well designed. They take you to unusual locations. You'll find yourself like flying through the deep south in swamps, um, going over waterfalls. I mean, the whole experience is great fun. Uh, the graphics are superb, the sound is superb. Overall, it's a very, very stylish, very playable game. What more can you possibly want? Great racing frolic, Sonny. <laughs> Old psychopaths never die. They just tend to hide around corners, sweating. Such is the case with the cast of Loaded, the manic PlayStation shoot 'em up that grabbed taste by its ears and flung it into a room of burning teddies. Most of the game's characters have returned for this sequel, the missing reprobates having gone into missionary work or joined Harry Seacombe's highway team. 
Not much has changed in the loaded universe. Random violence still stalks dark corridors. Sudden explosions still light up the sky. There are, however, two brand new characters to try your hand at. Sister Magpie is the first, a decidedly uncharitable nun with a chrome wimple and matching plasma cannon. She is joined by the Consumer, a purple-haired vixen with stripy tights and the heart of a devil. If you grow weary of never-ending bouts of blasting, then Reloaded offers you the chance to interrogate characters before finally sending them to console heaven. Their answers could give you the quickest route to that elusive armory power-up, or just directions to the nearest in-game toilet. Right, the next game is Reloaded. Now we all remember Loaded, it was one of the very first sort of shooty games on the PlayStation. And it was good to a point, it was a bit limited, the gameplay was very similar. It was a cross, if you remember, between Doom and sort of a top-down shooty game like Gauntlet. Now Reloaded is the same in theory, because this time you have like little plot lines and little missions to do, instead of just picking up keys and opening doors. This time you actually have to say, for instance, find a terrorist in the middle of a desert. And, and kill them, or stop them going off on the jetpack, that kind of thing. And it does improve the game quite a lot, actually, putting these little missions in. The only problem with it, though, is it is still not exactly a blast fest. There's a lot to do on screen, but there's, it's just not enough. The actual playability itself just lacks that certain something. I mean, it's hard to say, and all games players would know this, what that certain something is, but you know once you've played it. The graphics also seem actually worse than the original, and the music isn't as good either. So uh, I'm not overly impressed. Hmm, it's pretty much exactly what I thought when I played this. I mean, this should be a great game in theory. I mean, the characters, the actual idea for the characters themselves are wonderful. You've got this huge series of very exotic characters doing balmy things. But like Rick says, the graphics are inferior to the original. I mean, the main point of appeal of the original version was just the extremity of violence. You get power up after power up after power up. Your guns get bigger. The explosions get bigger. The amount of entrails flying off the walls got bigger. But this was just boring, quite frankly. It didn't have that kind of appeal. Uh, what they've added to it is a nice idea, again, in theory. But they didn't do really very much with it. You could interact with characters to a very limited way. But overall, not a terribly fascinating game. An unsatisfying blaster, which is the most important thing about shooters. You have to feel engaged. You have to feel like you want to carry on butchering your way through levels. And this just didn't have it. A nice idea in theory. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Talk about bad luck, there you are, lone survivor of the original Destruction Derby, limping manfully to the stadium exit, dreaming of peace, quiet in your grandmother's soup recipes. And what happens? Some heartless cad organises a sequel, and you're strapped screaming back into the driving seat. This time around, there are even more contestants to deal with. 19 card-carrying maniacs just dying to crush your lovely bonnet and spit blood on your wing mirror. There are also seven tracks from the reasonably cultured SCA Speedway to the Death Bowl, a shadowy puddin' basin of fender-bending mayhem. The rules are, uh, well, um, there actually aren't any, not in the strictest sense of the word. You basically score points by the amount of damage you inflict on your fellow sportsmen, from 10 points for spinning your opponents a paltry 90 degrees to the top score of 25 for wrecking it entirely and sending him running for the comfort of a hot bath and an elastoplast the size of a hammock. Watch it! Right, well, my review of this game is going to earn me the normal tirade of abuse, the shouting and screaming I have to put up with from Rick, but I'm sorry, this was rubbish, I hated it. 
I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the original either. I thought it was a very one-dimensional game. And there is one big fault for me with Destruction Derby 2. It's not that it's particularly hard to play, but if you're in a race and you crash once, suddenly every single opponent rushes past you and goes off. I mean, the best thing about the game are the, the death bowl levels, the arena levels, which are fantastic. Um, they're great fun, wing mirrors flying everywhere, teeth flying everywhere, they're great. But the actual stock car levels and the circuit levels, although they're playable and they're fun and the carnage is nice, they don't make for a good racing game, merely because the challenge is so unevenly weighted and I just can put my fingers in my ears because they're beautiful. I'm not going to abuse him. I've been taking little pills since the last time we did this for me heart. And I'm telling you, I'm going to be quite calm. I may kill him later on. But hey, that's something to look forward to. Destruction Derby 2 is a great game. Now, the point of like crashing and then other cars passing you, uh, isn't that not to crash? Don't crash. That's it. I mean, wow usual concept, a driving game that you mustn't crash in, otherwise you'll get beat. Oh, isn't that like life? Destruction Derby 2 is absolutely superb. The original was a bit through, from my opinion, but Destruction Derby 2 really takes it to a new genre. I mean, firstly, you've got loads more effects, right. right. you've got pit stops where you can repair your car. If you crash, you do go slower. That's why they go past you. Oh. I mean, it's the point of the game. That's why the destruction mode is there. And anyway, at least it's got the arena. If you're no good at the racing mode, the arena is tops. You see cars flying up in the air and everything. I am saying this. Listen now. Destruction Derby 2 is completely original and will never be bettered for what it is. Words of wisdom there from somebody other than Rick. Oh, I like the look of that little racer, actually. I it's think you're right. Bad. It it's good. not bad. I think it's very good. Okay, we're well, moving on now. We've, uh, we've gotten rid of our Hanna-Barbera references because uh, the YouTube channel won't let us mention Godzuki anymore. And we're moving on yeah. to the competition. I'd rather move on to stop animation. Okay, like more. So we go on to more. But no, and let's, little go, paint let's box. go into the competition. Because and do you remember Mr trouble. Barker, who always used to be in trouble with the council? The council won't Actually, like he was great. What ever happened to him? I think he's the producer now or something at the BBC. Is he? Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Oh, no, actually, That's I why they have sweeping changes. Yeah, there you go. Okay. See, he's not a top television presenter. Uh, okay, hey, moving, right. on to the computer, uh, moving on to the competition. What's today's clue? Right, today's clue is he may well present Global Village. In a dress, ladies and gentlemen. Because it's actually a woman who's doing Global Village. Is it? Yeah. So it's a man put on a dress and a wig or something. I never knew that. Well, it's a bit cryptic, but there you go. There's a second clue for you. At the end of the week, will be all of the clues. I've seen Mrs. Doubtfire, and that was a bloke. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that was Robin Williams, and he was top. Eddie Izzard wears a dress. Yeah, I know. Well, that's his own fashion statement. I mean, he's allowed to do that. Well, you never know. You never know. What about Tootsie? Do you remember that was Dustin Hoffman in a dress as well? <laughs> Most convincing. I thought it was actually quite That's a hell of a lot of it going round. There is. I don't know. Maybe that's next week TV you'll see me. You. Maybe next week you'll see me in a little ballet skirt or something. Who knows? If you want to see that, write in on a postcard. Oh, I think I've got to go. Yeah, time for a break, everybody. He's left, and I don't blame him. It's just you and me, Drew. We'll see you all after the break for more top television action. Everybody, we're back from the break and we're back, back on back, air. Back, back. What was that? Backity back, 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 back. Thank you, Rick. Time I for learned that at little... presenting school, ladies and gentlemen. No, you didn't. You learned that from some hobo you met when outside. When you forget your lines, school. you just repeat the same word over and Something over again. Something very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Again. Don't listen to anything you say. Uh, during the and break, again. we looked up the Tony Hart website, the official we website. did. Live from Las Vegas, because that's where he's living now. And, uh, and we found out, in fact, it wasn't Mr. Barker. It was Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. He was always in trouble with the councillors. And every week he'd knock over Tony, Hart, uh, Tony Hart's easel or something like that. And he'd get most yeah. upset. 
Do you remember he had a different presenter every week and a different assistant for Tony Hart? He was very good actually. There was one I had a particular crush on when I was about 12. Really? They got yeah. an injunction against you though, didn't they? Yeah. They um, got a court order to say you're stop sending her letters. I'm not allowed to go within okay, at least uh, 50 in, yards. Yes. Okay, well, Bob Mills is still lying uh, somewhere typical in a hospital. They're syringing the opal through out of his nose <laughs> at the moment, I believe. <laughs> they certainly had a real recall terrible. kind of thing. Yeah, they so can't get past his shoulder pads. This is the problem. They've had to sort of get a crane in to take it out. He shouldn't have left the wrapper on. That was it's the problem. a messy experience. Otherwise, it just slips down. Tim Boone is keeping a constant vigil by his side. So while that's happening, me and Rick are going to have another one of our famous walkabouts at the arcade show and uh, show you what's going on this year. Should we do it? Ready. One, two, three. Please work. So there we were, Barry and myself were wandering aimlessly around the ATEI looking for any small nuggets that might throw our attention. And blow me, we found X Street Fighter 3D hidden in some cranny. Basically, Japanese boffins have been hidden away in small dark rooms, creating a version of Street Fighter made of Lego. Yep, it's 3D time, but with the same kind of moves that you can expect from any Street Fighter game. It's looking rather smart, but is it indeed a Virtua Fighter contender? We're not overly sure, but it looks rather good indeed, and we're more than happy. It should be in your arcades pretty soon, although this version we were told was only about 75% complete, so maybe we'll see a bit more added to it before you do. So you're sitting at home and you're saying to yourself, good lord Barry, surely you can't give me any more red hot exclusives. Well, once again you'll be wrong. Here it is, folks, for the first time on British TV, the Red Hot number one Street Fighter 3D. The Street Fighter mob have gone 3D, and it's all a little bit crazy. Jews frothing at the mouth. I haven't seen him this excited since the 12-hour Huckleberry Hound Marathon on the Cartoon Network. It's that good. My man with the plan, Martin, has been playing it all day. Martin, what's it like? Well, uh, what you come to expect from uh, Capcom, top-class gaming action with uh, good graphics. Uh, what they've done, they've taken the, the Street Fighter characters, put them in a nice 3D environment. The graphics aren't as polished as, say, like Tekken 3. They're more like Tekken 2. But the game is just as good as the other Street Fighter games. If you're a Street Fighter fan, you're going to love it. There's loads of new characters, and all the moves are there. Great, now you've got a lot of the old characters. You've got Ryu's back, Chan Li's back, Gal's back. What are the new characters like? Do they play as well? Yeah, there's a, a, a girl called Pullum, and she's, she does a lot of kick maneuvers, where she does kicks over the head, she does uh, spin kicks, like what Chun Li does, things like that. And uh, there's a uh, Skelomania, who's a, a, a skeleton-style character, and he comes in and does all weird sorts of stuff. It's uh, completely crazy. But top game. Right now, this is sort of Capcom's early foray into the 3D market. They've been left a couple of uh, years behind Namco and Sega, and are catching up. It doesn't look as good as Tekken 3. Do you think that will hurt it in the long run? No, I don't think. I think die-hard uh, Street Fighter fans will love it. I'm not a great Street Fighter fan, but I still like it. I'm a, a Tekken fiend myself, but I'd play it. Because it's a lot more skill involved than Tekken. You have to get the moon maneuvers off a lot harder. They're a lot harder to do than wet sell at Tekken. Well, in my opinion, uh, Capcom have always been the main people for playability. You think they've uh, concentrated on that more than the graphics? Oh, certainly have, yeah. Playability is always top with them. So. There you go, you've heard it first. Playability is always top. Uh, Duke can't contain himself anymore. He's going to put his tripod down and go for this. This might even take over from the new smooth. You never know. Oh, look at this. Look at, look. Look, it's Ermon Jew from the Magic Roundabout. <laughs> Ermon Jew. We love you, Ermon Jew. Come back to us, Ermon Jew. It's not alive, Jew. We've got to move on. Let's go. Yep, Atari are back. They're bringing out more arcade games like you've never seen before. Well, that's a complete lie, actually, because San Francisco Rush, which is their latest driving game effort, is exactly like you've seen before. You've seen it a million times. You've seen it over and over again. Sega Rally, Daytona, any other driving game. Yep, that's it. Except this time, at least, it's based in San Francisco. Hang on a second, though. If this is San Francisco, where are the hills? Where's Macy's? Where's Michael Douglas? 
San Francisco, here I come. James World's where I'm headed from. That's right, Atari make their grand comeback in their brand new racing spectacular San Francisco Rush. Uh, basically, it is based in San Francisco, surprise, surprise. And so this should supposedly deliver all the high thrills and uh, large jumps that San Francisco has to offer. Our man Martin has been getting to grips. What's it like, Mark? Sorry, I fell asleep. Uh, San Francisco Rush, don't rush out and play it. It's, it's bad. Well, I must admit, it does kind of look like San Francisco Crawl. The graphics are nice, but it's not very fast, is it? Not at all. I'm doing 140, 40 miles an hour, and there's nothing at all on the road. I can sit here quite happily like this, not do anything. The game, it, a Jaguar has done better. It's not something you'd, you'd expect to see in an arcade now. They've tried to look like Sega, but failed miserably. Oh, I think it's uh, five years too late. First of all, oh, you just heard that crash. I think that's just about where this game should go. First of all, the Lynx, then the Jaguar, and now this game. Atari, get up! Oh, oh blur. You made it, Rick. Yeah, this time Finally. I seemed to work. He gave me a few lessons just I for did. the show. Mistress Mika got on the, uh, got, got on the telephone and told him what he's doing wrong. Apparently, he got mad.